Hi, it's Adam from Impact Gamers. I'm going to do a quick tutorial about how to make a little tank game. And so if you haven't used Click Team Fusion before, you're probably better watching one of the introductory videos. But here we go. So we're going to go into frame one. And um, in frame one, we're going to add some active objects. I'm just double clicking on blank space, double click on active and shove it in. Uh, this is going to be the tank. Now I'm going to name it for tank P space one for player one. Now the reason that I did that I'll show you in a moment, but I'm going to clear it. I'm going to, it's going to be a dark green tank. I'm going to resize it and stretch it um, and make it a bit taller. So, oops, not proportionally. It wants to be tank shape. Okay. Now the hot spot, um, I'm going to position, this is the central point in the middle. And I'm also going to make it, I'm going to make it eight directions, which isn't, you know, you could make it 32 directions if you wanted. Um, up here and use a different movement race car, but we're going to just do eight directions for the moment. So create rotated directions and there they are. Great. That's our tank done. And I will just set the movement to be eight directions. And in terms of speed and acceleration, let's just go in here. Um, speed a lot slower because it's a tank. So maybe 15 deceleration lower and acceleration really low, maybe 20. Okay. Right. So we'll test this game. I'm going to press F7. And here we go. There's my tank. Happy with that. Moving about. Great. Close the test application. Make sure you close your test application. Um, right, that's okay. I'm now going to clone it. Now, cloning it makes the evil twin. <laughs> but as you can see, the number one has become a number two. That's the reason I named it. Rather than player one tank, tank player one uh, means that when you rename it, the numbers increase. It's now an orangey tank. And the difference I need to say is it's moved by player two. Now, when I test the game and use the arrow keys, what? I said player two. That's because by default, no idea why, uh, player one and player two have the same controls. So in the application, runtime options, right down, deep down at the bottom, you've got default controls just under the runtime options. So the application, edit those and get them on screen. So these X's allow us to choose if it's joystick controlled or keyboard controlled. When you click on keyboard, they did it for me. When you click on keyboard, these come up. So I'm going to say player one is uh, W, S, A, and D. And button one to shoot will have space bar. It's also button three. Um, and then on two, we've got up, down, and we'll have enter to be button one. It's also button four, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. Great. Okay. So next we're going to integrate some turrets. So we're going to add another active object. So I just double click in a blank space, but I could insert a new object, uh, but you already know that hopefully I'm going to stretch this out a bit. So um, it's going to be much wider, maybe 40 and just zoom in a bit on the source pan, which is a magnifying glass and a lighter green filled in to be my turret. Draw it facing to the right because that's the way it believes it will be facing. Center point in the center. But this time I'm going to put my hotspot on the tip of the turret because that's where I want the bullets to be created. And the action point is where when you launch an object, things are created. So create rotated directions. There we go. Uh, name this turret P space one. And let's clone it. And we've got turret P two. All right, and there we go. Now, one thing I didn't do, but it's going to be useful later on, is I'm going to group these in a qualifier. So just in the events, I'm going to put both of these at the same time into the qualifier of uh, being player. That's fine. And um, I don't need to put those in a qualifier. I think that they'll be fine without. Double click, add an active object. This can be my... Um, what are they? Shell, a shell that's fired from the rockets. This is going to be the shell. Let's just uh, draw something in. Oh dear, that's pretty bad. It's also pretty huge. Uh, so let's see if I can do that. Uh, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do, because I'm just a little bit um, particular, I'm going to copy half of it, flip it around, and make it so perfectly mirrored. And just to add a nice bit of texture, because I can. Um, I'm going to have a 10, size 10 spray can and just add a bit of texture onto it. Let's 
probably a bit too much pressure, too much pressure there. But anyway, once those clicks fade, you can see there it is. I'm going to make that eight and create rotated directions. Oh, mm, put it in the center. There we go. Let's do that again. Create the rotated directions and overwrite. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be uh, ammo for player one, or maybe shell uh, for player one, and then clone that shell for player two. Right. Happy with those, but I don't want those to start at the beginning of the game. So in my in my runtime options, I'm going to say they aren't created at the start. They won't actually exist when the game starts. Pop those out of the way. I always put things in the top because when you expand your frame to make it bigger, it, um, it grows downwards and to the right. So just use the area top left or the left hand side to, to put items that you're putting out of the way. Right. OK, so the uh, tanks, let's add a rule in to say new condition. So just go on the event editor there, new condition always, so special always, always want the, oh, that's a bit small, always want the turrets here position to be on top of the tank. And then for the same for this one, always position, select position to be relative to the tank. Uh, quick test for that, always good to have a quick little test. Movement, movement, yep, good, right. Now in the game that Joseph made that I put on Twitter, he also made it auto aim, so let's do that. So direction, look in the direction of the tank, the opposite tank. And for this one, direction, look in the direction of the, oh, I've got the right way around. Yes, okay, yep, good. Now, if we run the frame, there we go. I can now drive about and the tanks will look at each other. Oops, getting control confused about which is which. Oh, oh, spot the issue. Good that we did the checking. Uh, we didn't create the rotated directions. What happened, I'll show you, is that when it's not facing that direction, it's not that color, but now it will be. Good, right, okay. Always good to check. Right, now we'll drive past each other. There we go, perfect. Now I'll add in the firing, new condition. When player one, joystick, read the state, not up, turn that off, we don't want up. Fire button one, drag it down to copy it. And player two presses fire. We want this turret to launch an object. It's gonna launch a shell and it's gonna launch it in the direction that it's uh, of the turret, that's fine. And then drag that diagonally down so it applies to this one. Okay, let's do that. Great. Oh. Yep. We can see that the directions don't all match match up. Just double check. I might I might need to do this 32 directions to make it a bit nicer. 32. All right. And I could have possibly done that with the turrets actually as well. Yeah, yeah, that's much nicer. Go back on the turrets and do the same. Like I said, with the tanks, I've only set it to eight directions, so it'd be a waste of memory for the game to have them all the other directions. Just pull the slider up, 32 directions. There we go. That's much smoother. There we go. Great. Okay, we can spam the fire button. That's not good, so let's sort that out. New condition. Not new condition, sorry. We want to limit when these get made. So just we're going to insert right click and insert. Oh, I've lost my, um, I've just turned my uh, mouse click sure on. It's a uh, red click is left and the click in blue is right click. So I'm going to right click on pressed fire one for player one. And I'm going to insert that for the amount of bullets, I'm going to count them and compare to the number of objects. So if the number of shell objects is equal to zero, then we will create another one. And that works okay because it's not created at the start. If it was, we'd already start with one of them. So that wouldn't help. Um, and so I'm going to drag this down, but it, they look the same. They're not the same. I need to change this to number two. Okay, so now we should be able to spam fire. There we go. What? You know, so, oh, but we very much can spam fire on that one. Let's have a quick look. We're actually launching this is where icons really help. In here, let's just change this 
because these look the same, I'm just going to add a number two on its icon. Now the icons get updated when you change the image. Um, so just be careful and let's put a blue number one on this one. All right. Yeah, that's the issue we're launching because I copied it. Well done if you spotted that. Launch object number two. There we go. Use icons to help you. Um, right. So let's test that. Perfect. Good. Right. Uh, now we're going to add in some obstacles. So I'm going to add another active object in. I'm just going to make this a solid block and we're going to name it maybe wall. Uh, wall standard. Oops, no need for the hashtag. So wall standard there and we'll put that in a group. And that can be in a or oh, it could be in all sorts of groups. It's going to be dis breakable. It could be in that group. All these groups don't matter. Obstacles, uh, they're just a way of naming things. I'll say breakable because um, it can be broken. Right, I'm also going to turn on the grid, the 32 by 32. And then that means that, let's turn it visibly off, but then it means that this will snap nicely. I'm also going to put player one and player two opposite corners. I'm going to shove the turrets out the way for a moment. Um, and here's my wall. I'm going to use the paint mode, get the wall. I'm just going to paint in some walls just by clicking in. Trying to leave enough gap. Because our tanks are 32, the grid should mean that they're always able to get through gaps. But let's just make it a bit harder. Great. Now, at the moment, we'll, we can go through those walls. So um, there's not much help. So what we'll do is we'll add in a simple command that if any of the players collide with a breakable, they stop. And I have to put that on the uh, group of the players, the qualifier of the players there. There we go. And stop. Great. Still shoot through. So let's um, let's sort out the shooting. Now, a new condition. If uh, Oh, let's put the bullets in a group as well to make our life easier these shells let's uh put them in a group let's put them in uh bullets that'll do i think there's rockets as well but bullets will do um new condition any of the rockets hit a breakable wall we will have them be destroyed um the bullets destroyed okay let's just run that great happy with that now um let's get uh to the cleverer bits. Okay, let's have a look at um, the walls being able to be destroyed um, and the tanks being able to be destroyed. So for the tanks, we're going to say that if bullet one hits tank two, or and this is where the icons come in useful that I drew, two collides with one, then we need to destroy this and we'll need to destroy that together and we'll need to destroy this and that. So if they hit the orange one, the tank and the turret get destroyed. If they hit the uh, green, the green turret and tank, turret, uh, turret and trunk, uh, turret and tank get destroyed. All right, so here's the interesting bit that um, that worked out how to do. I came across in Click Team forums about calculating the last frame of an animation, not the level frame, but the an image frame, the animation frame. So um, on the wall, I'm going to create multiple frames, sort of cells of animation or images of animation. Now, uh, if I press the plus, then I go on to the second one. I'm just going to draw with transparent. So just add a couple of cracks coming in on all four sides. And then three. And then I'm going to extend these cracks. Maybe add another bit of another one. OK. And then four. Okay. Start to round off the edges now. It's getting pretty damaged. Maybe up my pen size to add the cracks in. Good. And then add another one. Nearly done. Just go back. That, that's growth. That one needs to grow as well. Yeah. Okay. And then a final one of it all being destroyed. So bigger pen size. And okay. Fantastic. Now notice. There are six frames, okay? Remember that number um, because it's going to be useless. Right, the six frames. 
we're going to do a special thing to work out their health. Now, alterable values can get used for health. And I could just say that I could give the wall an alterable value of six, and then I could get it to count down. And then um, while it counts down, the animation cha animation image, their frames change. OK, I could do that. I'm not. I'm going to simplify the whole thing. So um, I'm going to just call it damage. And I'm going to say, or maybe we could say, max damage because it is going to be the maximum damage they can take i'm going to say new condition at the start of the frame and this command's going to be run before all of the others even though it's number eight because it's start of frame a green one that's going to launch at the beginning i'm going to get all the breakable objects i'm going to change their animation frame and this is the first clue that six isn't going to be the right number the first frame is actually number zero. Even though it calls it frame one, it's zero. So it's actually zero to five rather than one to six. I'm going to set it to 99. But there are only six frames or five if you're counting from zero. I know. But collecting fusion will attempt to take it to the, the furthest frame it can. It's closest to 99. So it will end up being the frame, which is the last one, frame five or six, depending on how you're counting. OK. Right. Well, what use is that? We're then going to set the alterable value for max damage to be whatever this animation has got to. So whatever animation uh, frame it's got to, which will be number five uh, in real life and number six in the editor, but number five, it will set the max damage to be five. And then we're going to go and just change the animation all the way back to zero. The first one, the first one is zero. Now, that's going to mean that all of these um, breakables, if I run the application, have a look at the debugger, and have a look at any of them, they should all have an alterable value of 5. There we go. Just conclusive proof. Oh, I think the magnifier's... Oh, there we go. Magnifier's still working. 5. OK. What use is that? Well, we just need to add one more uh, condition and two more actions. So when the bullet hits a breakable here, what we want to do for the breakable is we want to change its animation frame to be whatever its current animation frame is. And remember, I'm staying with the group breakable. I'm not doing it for wall. I'm doing it for anything that's breakable, plus one. OK, well, that's quite cool. Let's just have a quick look at that. As you can see, as I shoot, wall gets destroyed. But we need to know when it's fully destroyed. But we do know that. We know that if. The animation frame is equal to the max damage. That's the last frame it can be. So at that point, we can then, I'm going to paste it into the background so it still exists, but not as an obstacle, just as a visual effect, and destroy the wall. And then, da -da 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 -da, as we shoot through the wall, it means that the wall is actually destroyed. So this wall isn't destroyed. Let's see if we can shoot through it. Go a bit higher. There we go. And we can shoot through. So we've now got destructible walls. Right, that was a lot of effort just for destructible walls. But no, we've created destructible anything now. So if I clone this object, get an evil twin, and call this wall, um, I don't know, brick, I can then go through, and um, I could then draw a lovely brick wall. Let's see if I can draw a really, really quick brick wall. It won't be lovely, though. OK, so a couple of stripes, a couple of bricks. OK, um, and then I can delete these frames I'm not using. And I'll say a brick wall probably gets destroyed in like two hits. So first bit, let's just add a bit, quite a bit of damage. And then the second bit, oh. If you remember before, I added from the last one, so it already had the same damage, and so the animation went smoothly. So I'll just use the add on the previous one. OK, there we go. Right, let's use the um, the tool to add in some brick walls in here. Now, because the brick walls have less frames, it does mean dun, 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 they get destroyed much quicker. So we've now got destructibles which you don't need to bother setting alterable values to. You just set that animation frames. So it doesn't work with things that um, that aren't basic. You know, you want something that, that uh, just has one form that gets destroyed over time. That's great. Now, what Joseph did on his game is he also said, um, if you get destroyed by a rocket, 
which is our rules six and seven. Then do a timed event, and after three seconds, allow some gloating for the players, we'll run a command. Just call it next, maybe, something simple. Uh, oops, that's that shouldn't have gone there. That should be on line six. Next, next, a new condition. Um, when the timed event happens, called next, good thing we choose a simple word, then it goes to the next frame. So there we go. There's a there's a complete game there, and you can duplicate frame one. Right. Um, the other thing is you can just add score as well as the other thing. You could make the rockets maybe go a bit slower to give you a chance to avoid them. Let's see if I can fit through this gap. Oh, oh. Oh, oh no, I can't. I can't because I can't turn that sharply. <laughs> there we go. Great. One, two, three. Next frame. Fantastic. Have fun. Um, if you manage to make a game, comment. Let us know. <laughs>